Welcome to Functional Philosophy, the show in which I, Charles II, explain and apply Ayn Rand's philosophy, Objectivism. If you'd like to ask me a question on Objectivism or its application, just go to charles2.com slash contact. And my last name is spelled T as in tango, E as in echo, and W as in whiskey. I can't remember if I've yet mentioned passing a couple milestones on the show, so I'm going to mention them now at the risk of repeating myself. First, I've passed a thousand subscribers on YouTube. In fact, at this point, I'm over 1,100. So progress there remains steady. And second, I have passed a thousand dollars a month on Patreon. At this point, I am over 1,200 a month. Now, Rucka has taken an interest in fundraising for me, and he believes that I can get up to 1500 a month, which is my next goal, by the end of this month, the end of this year. And he has gotten it in his mind that it will encourage you to increase your support if I promise to clap like PewDiePie whenever I go on to the next question. You know, PewDiePie does this next meme or meme review thing, and Rucka wants me to do that. So I'll just clap when I say next question. And Rucka has in mind that if I promise you this, I can gain $300 in support in two weeks. I am certain that will not happen, but I promised Rucka I would promise you that I will clap if I do reach that milestone by the end of the year. So there I have fulfilled my verbal contractual obligation to Raka. And for those of you who like our talks, I made this promise in the course of a recent recorded discussion that should be going up any day now. It was about five hours long, so for all of you who have been asking me for more talks with Raka, a lengthy one will be up soon. And I want to thank everyone who has supported me on Patreon and everyone who continues to do so. It always feels wrong to bring up financial support without thanking the people who are supporting me. I really do appreciate it, and you make it possible for me to do this, both financially and motivationally. Now on to today's questions. I've organized these questions, so today is going to be an arty episode all about art. First question. You said that utilitarian objects are not art, but I have seen many utilitarian objects that are very attractive and interesting, even entertaining to look at, ellipsis, question mark. Well, your false premise here is that art equals attractive, interesting, and entertaining. Artistic and visually appealing are not synonyms. Art is a concretization of an abstraction too broad to view perceptually in everyday life. The idea that the universe is benevolent, open to your values, or that reason is your means of survival and achieving your values, broad philosophical ideas, these kinds of ideas are not the kinds of things that you can see perceptually, like you see a cup. They're broad abstractions, but in order to give them the evocativeness of perceptual concretes, what people can do is create objects that embody those broad abstractions, and that is what we call art. Now, why then does this preclude utilitarian objects from being art? Well, because a utilitarian object serves a purpose, a non-artistic purpose, a utilitarian purpose. If you have a vase, it must be capable of holding liquid or holding something. And so its design must comport with those requirements. Not every aspect of the vase is designed to express an abstract idea. So you're working at cross purposes there, and that undercuts art. At worst, you have to implement elements that are against the idea you're trying to convey. At best, you have something extraneous which on its own undercuts art. Imagine you went to go see the Mona Lisa and stapled to the sign of it was a page torn out of a phone book because the painting had to also fulfill the purpose of giving people the information contained in that page of the phone book. And people had to be able to look up these telephone numbers. Well, that's totally irrelevant to the painting. 
It would be distracting and undercut the purpose of the painting. So every element of a piece of art must be directed at the singular purpose of conveying an abstract idea. And as soon as you give yourself a dual purpose, you are no longer exclusively focused on conveying that idea. Now you have to work in other elements that don't have anything to do with that idea. So a painting on the side of the vase can be art, but the vase as a whole is not art. Video games fall into the same category. Due to their interactivity and the fact that they are games, tests of skill, and the fact that most games are premised on you're having a good time, they're supposed to be fun, all of these are things that are orthogonal to presenting an abstract idea. So the story, the plot, the characters can be art in a game, but the game as a whole is not art, just like the vase. Now, that's not to say that aesthetics doesn't apply to utilitarian objects. You know, Ayn Rand endorsed the architectural principle of form follows function. Now, take a bed, for instance. That's not art. It doesn't convey an abstract idea, at least not as a whole object. It's something you sleep in. But the optional elements of the bed can be designed in such a way that they mesh with the function of the bed. So it's not exactly art, but there is still a question of aesthetics there. So I'm not saying, well, if it's a utilitarian object, there's no question of visual appeal or design. It's just that that's not the same thing as art. So the bottom line is that the form of a utilitarian object is restricted by its utilitarian purpose, which is not the case with a piece of art, which has no restrictions except those imposed by the nature of the idea the object is supposed to convey. Next question. Why is it necessary to make aesthetics a separate branch of philosophy next to important branches as epistemology and morality? Well, assuming that you wouldn't take it out of philosophy altogether, where would you propose putting it? Are you going to put it in metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, politics? Where would you put it? The reason it's a separate branch of philosophy is that it's a substantial subject that doesn't easily fit into any of the other branches. It's really as simple as that. You need art in order to live. Art conditions you psychoepistemologically. It trains you to think properly. And it provides you emotional fuel. It is indispensable to the life of a rational human being. It is not some secondary, irrelevant, or optional thing. I read novels like The Fountainhead and watch superficial things like Dragon Ball Z. In order to survive, I need that fuel, and I need that training in thinking in terms of essentials, which is what art trains you to do. Now, most people are so ethically impoverished that they don't even realize that they're starving. It's like being in a concentration camp and not realizing what minerals and vitamins and nutrients your body's missing. You don't even realize you're not supposed to be so thin that your ribs are sticking out. But you're not supposed to be that way. If you don't feel the need for art, you are living a pathetic life. If you pursue values, you will feel the need for a romantic presentation of man's place in the universe. You won't be able to go on without those kinds of presentations. And I'm not against candy. Sometimes you need a burst of sugar to keep yourself going, so long as not everything you eat is candy. Candy here being an analogy for popular superficial art. You do need a diet of real, serious, deep art, like Ayn Rand's novels. But more superficial things are fine, too, and can provide a lot of fuel. So anyway, all of that just to say that you need art as surely as you need food. Art is not some optional aspect of a rational person's life, which is why it's important enough to be a separate branch of philosophy. And the reason it's a separate branch of philosophy is that art is a concretization of metaphysics. It is intimately related to the other branches. It is a philosophical product. 
Next question. While certain important aspects of art are objective, would objectivism agree that there are still parts, however minor, about art that can be subjective? Or is that more an example of personal taste and how much people like slash enjoy it, not as much as the quality of the art itself? Well, subjectivity is a method. There are no objects that are subjective. Nothing exists in a subjective form, except ideas. So your view about whether something is art can be subjective, but that's a wrong, bad approach. Your feelings about what something is don't tell you whether that thing really is what you feel it is. So whether something is actually art is something you have to determine objectively, the same way you have to determine everything else if you're really going to know it. Now, you are clearly confusing here the issue of context and subjectivity. These are not the same thing. It's possible for something to mean more to you than it does to other people because of your personal context, but that's not the same thing as being subjective. Subjective is, I feel this way, I don't know why, but I'm just going to accept the feeling. But understanding where your feeling is coming from, and then accepting it or trying to correct it, depending on which is appropriate, is not subjective. So I really like the movie Escape from New York, with Kurt Russell playing Snake Plissken. And this character is an anti-hero. He doesn't care about anything. He is an exaggeration of anti-heroism. He's not romantic. He won't save the innocent. He lets injustice go so long as it doesn't affect him. Now, objectivity demands that you understand that that is what the art is portraying. That is what that movie is portraying. However, when I was young, I really liked that movie because I didn't understand that that's what the movie was going for. To me, Snake Plissken was an anti-altruist. He was an individualist. He thought for himself. He didn't just save these innocent people because he was supposed to. He did his own thing and looked out for number one, and he had this great flowing 80s Kurt Russell hair and this eye patch, and he's just the image of cool to me. He was tough, confident, didn't accept traditional moral values just because everybody else did. Now, what does objectivity require there? Well, objectivity requires that I understand that that's actually not the point of the movie. But so long as I understand that, it's okay for me to enjoy my interpretation, so long as I realize the context of that interpretation, which in this case is very narrow and applies only to me. But objectivity is an issue of recognizing the truth in context. So if I were to say the way I enjoy the movie is the way the movie really is, that would be subjective. But it's not subjective for me to understand what the movie is really going for, and yet for me to be able to abstract that away and interpret it my own way, that's fine, so long as I understand that that's not how you're supposed to experience it. Peikoff mentions a similar story about himself. Ayn Rand was writing something about the sense of life of people who like uh, monster movies, horror movies, that liking those movies is reflective of a bad sense of life. And Peikoff said, well, not necessarily, because I like monster movies. We're talking about old school monster movies, not torture porn, Saw, or anything like that, but like old Frankensteins and stuff. And he said, well, I like those movies because they were different, and my little town was boring, there wasn't anybody interesting, and so this, to me, I saw this as something different. Now, that's not subjective so long as you realize that that applies in your specific context, and that's not how other people would rationally interpret the movie in their context. So, objectivity is not about getting out of context, it's just about recognizing context. And so, no, there's no aspect of art that's subjective. There are aspects that might mean something different to you than they mean to other people, but so long as you recognize why they mean what they mean to you, and whether that was intentional or it's a result of some association that's peculiar to you, 
Well, so long as you understand that, you're not being subjective. If you'd like to keep up with everything I do, just go to charles2.com. If you'd like to enable me to do more, just go to patreon.com slash charles2 and become a supporter. Thanks for listening.